Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. I've just installed uh, SolidWorks 2025 Service Pack 0 and I was just looking through the what's new document to see, you know, what I might use. My area of interest is pretty much around straight modelling. Uh, I don't do much in the way of drawings. Uh, I do some light assemblies, but, and I don't do any sheet metal. So uh, there's not much that's gone on. There's not much new stuff. There's the variable size fillet, which I'm going to look at in this video. Uh, there's the move body features, which is kind of interesting. Looks like the Deso's starting to open up um, some of these features that have been locked down in the past as to uh, being able to use configurations and equations. So that's good. Um, hopefully the next they add that to scale and some of the other features that are still locked out of using um, global variables. I was a little bit excited to see patterning reference geometry. But unfortunately, it's got some pretty big limitations. I'm yet to see or we'll think through that and see where it might be useful. Uh, anyway, let's jump into the variable fillet size. So, variable size fillet, sorry. It's got a continuous edge blend option now. And it says it can create blended edges that are extremely smooth. So, that doesn't say too much. So, I'm, I'm guessing it's the edges of the fillet, like where it um, terminates against the, the faces that have been selected or the edges of the surfaces that uh, the fillet's going to um, erode back. So I've created a, a little test block of geometry here in SolidWorks. It's got one circular fillet on the corner. The other corner has got a curvature continuous fillet. So if I turn on my curvature, you can see that one's curvature continuous and that one's got a, a constant radius of 20. So I wanted to see what would happen if I stuck a uh, variable fillet on there. So this is, I'll just edit this. So I've just picked all the edges. Um, this is using the continuous edge blend, which is the new option. So if you don't see it, it's hidden on fillet options. And I believe it is selected by default now. So um, this is just a simple bit of geometry. The reason I did this was I wanted to see what it meant by continuous edges. So I thought it might have done something up here where there's a where there's a corner. There's nothing funky going on there. So uh, and with this circular corner, there's nothing too funky going on there either, as far as I can tell. But what I had to do to see what the difference was in the output, because you can see if you can see some slight wrinkling in here with the old pre 2025 option, and now with this this looks smoother. So I'm wondering if, if they've implemented a new logarithm to um, set back from edges to control, you know, like the rails of the fillet. As I said, to compare the geometry, I've had to copy this body, which is done here, and then I've added uh, the same variable fillet, except um, if I edit this, I have not selected the continuous edge blend. So now if we look at the edges here, you can see some difference. So that wobble I was talking about in the pre-2025 version, you can see there, comes down, then up and wobbles down, then down again, versus the continuous edge version. And you probably think, oh, maybe I've got straight versus smooth selected. Um, so we'll make sure we've got straight transition on both of them. Straight transition, okay, so we are only comparing the new uh, continuous edge option. So that's one thing, looks pretty good, it looks much straighter, nicer to have less undulations in the variable fillet. But this is a fairly simple piece of geometry, so I'm going to open up some more complicated bits of geometry and see what uh, happens with the new fillet. Okay, so this is an old... Uh, SolidWorks exercise with uh, looking at making a mountain bike head tube area in the top and down tubes. So I'm going to run a fillet, variable fillet around here. One thing I did notice with this uh, continuous edge is it does seem to pick up if you only pick two edges and don't pick the, the edges in between. It seems to span across better. So we're going to set all on those and we'll pick this one in here as well. One thing that keeps happening is I think I'm changing the dimension and then you push enter and it closes out. Um, okay, 
So this is using continu continuous edge blend. So I will make these a bit bigger. And I'm going to add one more dimension there. And we'll make that maybe seven. I'll have to make these bigger. Okay. So that's the continuous edge blend. Have a look at curvature. That doesn't really tell us much because it's coarse. Um, make sure on curvature continuous, we change to straight transition maybe. Um, it is kind of hard to see what's going on. I think there appears to be with the continuous edge blend off, there seems to be a, more of a kick up here. So there's more undulations between the uh, fillet segments, which is what we saw on that, that little test block I had before. So the continuous edge blend on smooth transitions. I might make these even larger. So let's make that 10. I mean, that's not ideal, but that's probably because my radius there is too small. What would be really useful is a way to uh, skip a dimension, like if I could right click on that point and tell SolidWorks to ignore that uh, that vertex and then just interpolate from this 10 down to the dimension down here, because that means you'd end up with a nice smooth uh, transition along there without having to specify a fill up there, because that means when you change a fill it here then you have to change this one as well to try and smooth things out. I think anybody that's used variable fillets before has done that. Uh, where you go around in a sort of in a circle chasing yourself trying to tweak the fillets. Okay, so that's not fantastic there, that result on the inside. It is getting larger. It would probably be better if, if SolidWorks if they implemented cord, cord size fillets, uh, cord, the cord option across all fillets rather than just face fillets, because then, then you'll be able to control that via a distance between the fillet rails are a distance from the edge. I'll just have a look at this without the continuous edge blend on. And I'm just going to look in here and then I'll just hit undo and see if anything changes. Okay, so it's, it's different, but I mean, I don't know, I can't evaluate if it's better or not. So I'm going to try another bit of geometry now. Okay, this, this is another old... Um, surfacing exercise, like a lozenge form, so I'm going to try running a variable fillet around this loop here. So I go S for shortcuts, then we get options, and I'm just going to try picking a couple of edges first. So I'll pick four and maybe set two millimeters at as our radius and we're on curvature continuous and we've got continuous edge blend on oh, okay that's interesting is it okay with it off it's not going to work even if i pick these okay so that's interesting so i didn't have to have all the references all the edges and with the the continuous edge blend on it would it figured out that i wanted to put a fillet right across which is what tangent propagation is supposed to be for, I guess. Okay, so let's try changing some of these numbers. Okay, and we'll hit enter. And I'll turn my edges off and just have a look. It doesn't look too bad. Curvature. Zebra. Oh, we've got a break in tangency there. As you can see. I hit D for deviation analysis and check that. That's got a... Okay, it's got a deviation of 0 0.3. 0 0.3. 
0.28, so it's not massive, but that's interesting. Um, and it looks like it's on the other side as well. No, okay. So I'll just go and have a look at that fillet a bit closer. And see if it does the same thing without the continuous edge blend on. Oh, that's interesting. Without the continuous edge blend on, this, this segment of the fillet's kind of collapsed over on itself a bit. Yeah, okay, so it's got that, got that uh, G0 edge in there as well. Let's just try making it more extreme, maybe down the other end. Let's just go in here and make it larger on this end, uh, see what happens. So let's turn continuous edge blend back on for, for, Okay, and maybe down this end we'll, we'll drop these down to two. Well, that's strange, that hasn't updated, I'll change that to two. Push enter and see what happens. Okay, so the preview didn't update when I changed that dimension. Uh, now I'll just try tuning continuous edge blend off. Okay, so that still works. Okay, so that's not going to work with the edge blend off. Let's try turning it on. Okay, so that's, I'm noticing that with continuous edge blend on, it does seem to be more robust and will solve more situations. So that's a good thing. It can only be a good thing. Okay, uh, I'll just try one more bit of geometry, something a bit more demanding. There's some surfaces out of my PlayStation 5 controller uh, exercise. So... What this was, or what I'm going to do, is try and uh, add in a variable fillet around uh, this area here to sort of emulate this blend. Obviously we can't do exactly what I've got here because the fillet won't, um, won't match up to other boundaries etc. But we'll see if we can do it to a point because if you do be able, if you can create a fillet to sort of to a point, you can then trim bits out and then patch the rest of the surface in manually. So just going to roll back here to when it's edges, and then we'll add a fillet again. So make sure I'm on the continuous edge blend first. I'll just make it a a larger fillet to start with, and I might have to turn tangent propagation off. We'll just see. I don't think it will solve down here. This uh, edge angle deviation ends up going to zero. Yes, that's not going to work there. Okay, so let's try changing some dimensions. So I'll try making them all set those all to three. Just going to try that again, except I did prepare a fillet earlier, so let's roll down to where, there, where that is. Right, so I'll just unsuppress that. And we'll just go and have a look at this. Okay, so this is using the continuous edge blend. If I turn that off, it doesn't work. So again, variable fillet seems to be more robust um, when you do use the new continuous edge blend which is good. So you can see here I've got some some numbers, 6mm running around to 6mm and then dropping down at the top here. Obviously I can't get exactly what I wanted compared to the actual blend that's there because 
uh, the fillet starts, what would you call it, not falling over, but it doesn't want to build it. So, and I think that's probably here it gets a bit tight. Um, and in reality, it flares out quite a lot past this point. And it doesn't really like me, yeah, making these bigger. I'm just going to hit OK and we'll just interrogate that result with Zebra. Okay, so it's a little bit, I could fix that up so it's a, a bit smoother. We'll just see if, if the fillets actually seems to be blended over okay. There's a crease there, so okay. So we've got, as you can see there, if I turn Zebras off, is it that one? We've got almost one degree out of tangency there. I'll just check this one. That's all good, zero degrees. So I mean with something like this you could use a variable fillet and then trim out an area and then patch in uh, the geometry manually. But yeah. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up here. So variable fillet, SolidWorks 2025 with the continuous edge option, the new option. It seems to be quite a bit more robust with what geometry it will actually build a fillet over. Still missing some things. It'd be good if it had like a, a cord distance option or a distance from edge or a distance between rails or something like that to specify the, the fillet so you could end up with a much smoother um, transition between ends of the fillet or as it sort of goes around geometry but overall it's a good addition so yep that's all for me have a good one Andrew Jackson AJ Design Studio bye